Thanks, Eddie. Appreciate Thank it. You. Appreciate Thanks. it. So we love doing this, right, Tigo? We uh, keeps us sharp, right? Having to look and getting yep. to look at data. And I know that's what your passion is. You love data. That's why I call you the Statomatic, and now Eddie calls you the Statomatic. <laughs> but we sure appreciate you listening um, to Albuquerque Real Estate Talk. Tracy and Tigo Venturi, we're with Keller Williams Realty, Venturi Realty Group, and we're just so honored to have been the number one realtor team in New Mexico if by home sold in 2020 and um, and that, 2019 and 2019 <laughs> and you know obviously that makes a difference for our clients there's a lot of reasons why that's important but. you know what's interesting in this business Tracy and we say it every day is gosh just when you think you've seen everything and people know that whatever business they're in, right? You know, they can be in a business doing it for 10 years, right? And they've got their 10,000 hours and they're an expert. And yet there's something new that always comes up and it's like, well, that's a new one. And, so, and you know, having the experience uh, really, really matters in this particular um, market. Totally does. Doing over 500 transactions a year among our team and our weekly gatherings where we get together and talk about the best methods and what's working in today's market and sharing what each other is learning. It's it's such a collaborative and important environment for One for of the us things we've been clients. doing, and it's important for both buyers and sellers, is we will kind of debrief uh, when, when somebody gets a home under contract and they're on the buyer side. We talk about, okay, what were the strategies that made a difference? What what helped? Because right now it is a competition when you're making an offer for a home, right, Tracy? It, it is, absolutely. And, and then and then on the seller side, we also debrief and say, okay, what was it that made that particular homeowner decide, you know, a particular offer was the best offer so we can know what, what's working and what's not working and what may be important to sellers and what may not be. Right. So that we can make sure that when we work with home sellers, we're giving them the latest and greatest uh, information. So it's it's a uh, it's a great environment. We're really excited that we get to do this every week. We love real estate. We love talking to you about your real estate needs. So anyway, if you want to give us a call, 448-8888. We have a, a group of home buying specialists and home selling specialists. And 448-8888 will get you to our team and we'll get you connected to the right people. I'm a little uncomfortable today, Tracy. We have big lounge chairs in our little uh, uh, radio studio in our office today, and it's um, it's different than the normal desk chairs, and it's very very cozy here. So if you can't see us, which um, you know we do, record this and play it on uh, um, uh, Facebook and or uh, YouTube, so you can go back and watch. But anyway, um, okay. Let's see. Parade of Homes, Tracy. Yeah. Big, big weekend. Big weekend for the home builders. Twice a year, the New Mexico, uh, Central New Mexico, uh, so home, uh, what is it? Uh, home builders, home Asso builders Association. Association, HBA is just what I always call them. Uh, they do their big parade of homes where they, they put homes out for open their open houses to show off uh, the, the latest products and, and what the builders are building. Yep, and it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so yesterday, today, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and next Friday, Saturday, Sunday from 11 to 5. There's 21 homes in the Spring Parade of Homes. The, um, the featured builder this year is Pulte Homes at Inspiration, which is in the Petroglyph area, um, just north of I-40 and west... Um, West of the river, mm -hmm. uh, inspiration, the homes, the lots, there can be just some phenomenal views because it's sort of below the petroglyphs. Yep. Um, and if you haven't been out that way and you're thinking of new construction, give us a call. We'd love to show you that neighborhood as well as the others that are available. But th that neighborhood is quick to everywhere. There's some new s cluster schools over there. There's some new big fields. Like if your kids play soccer, you probably know that part of town. Yep. Um, but it's it's a great neighborhood but in addition lots of other homes to tour tigo do you happen to know how people are touring them in the days of covid well i don't i was thinking i didn't <laughs> find that out either because eddie said that we'll tell you how to get inside of them there's the safety protocol yeah so um the homes vary right from corrales to the west side um 
I'm sure there's a map. So if you go to just Google Homes of Enchantment, yeah, Mexico, it's the, the, but it's yeah. the website's Homes of Enchantment Parade dot com, and it's Home Builders Association of Central New Mexico, and um, it's all the information is right there. But you can tour if you're thinking of building anytime in the future or remodeling. This is the way to go, right? Go hit up these homes. Absolutely, and there's so many people remodeling right now, Tracy. It's you know there definitely has been a remodeling boom, and this is a, a great way to go see some of the designs. Some of the looks, some of the trends, you know, what's popular. Yeah. Um, one of the, you know, a couple challenges the home builders have had now, you know, in, in the last year is one, supplies. Um, there has been some supply chain issues for builders, so it's going to be interesting to see if anybody had to improvise. I know there's been some problems with certain uh, appliance brands. People, uh, builders weren't able to get, so they had to, to kind of do some uh, uh, creative stuff there, tile, you know, just... It, it's amazing. You start thinking about all the different little um, bits, if you will, that go into a home. And, you know, if you've got one part that, that you, you can't get, you've spec'd out a particular ceiling fan, and now you can't get that ceiling fan, it, which, which has happened, um, you know, it's a challenge. So they're, they're, they're scrambling all the time. So it'll be interesting to see. And, and I know, you know, there's 21 homes this year, which is less than normal, which is, you know, no surprise. Uh, however, there's, you know, you're going to be able to go see all of these and see what people have. The, the one thing is a lot of them are not for sale, though. They're either pre-sold or they're their model home that they're not that they're not selling. Right. And, and the homes range from East Mountains to Las Lunas, Corrales, the Valley. It's kind of everywhere. And what it says, I uh, was just trying to read ahead on the safety protocol. Oh, there we go. It looks like you need to get on their website and click on each property, the ones you want to tour, and see what they're doing because they're each allowed to set up their own. But honestly, you can view them virtually. Right? Yeah. Just get on your computer, if nothing else. But it's going to be a beautiful weekend. Go go out and tour some homes. So. Well, if nothing else, 2020 has 2021 has made a virtual tour of homes for sale. The the standard, which you know we've been doing it for I don't know how long, Tracy, but now yeah, it's become have. much 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 more common. We were ready for COVID, unfortunately. Yeah. So yeah. Tigo, you think back to 20, 21, 22 years ago when we were getting ready to build our house. Yes. What we did, can you believe it's been that long? I know, I know. We went to Parade of Homes, spring, fall. Yes. We, we toured showrooms, and it was part of how we figured out what our style was and what we loved. So when it came time to meeting with you know, a designer to put our house together, it wasn't an architect, it was a draftsperson. You know, we it's knew. funny, you would just click with me, it was like, we didn't have phones in our pocket all the I mean uh, yeah. cameras in our pocket all the time back then yeah no. we would we would have to like you know write notes and write names of products or try to find anyway that anyway sorry I just I yeah. digress there for a Things second a little I, yeah a little little different now than 20 22 23 years ago for sure so yeah yeah, yeah. Um, oh and think about you know, people thinking about buying a home right now and wondering if it's the market's too hot and if the prices are too high. And, you know, when we were building many, many years ago, we felt like we stretched ourselves, right? We built yep. and we were saying to ourselves, well, now is the time to put it in the house because once we get the house done, we're not going to go back and change the floors to brick floors, right? Yeah. And, and so we had to make some tough financial decisions back then of what we were going to put in the house, and we felt like we were spending too much. Well, 22 years later, we couldn't have made a better investment. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, and, and what happens if, if you've never gone through, I, I always say everybody needs to build a house once in their life, um, you know, custom or not, it's an interesting process. You know, the, the custom versus semi-custom versus production, um, it, it's a whole, you know, they're totally different processes. And that is one thing I, I just want to mention. If you've been thinking about building a home, uh, especially custom, which is, is, you know, kind of a different animal, um, get out there because now you can talk to the builders you can talk to lenders that I know that that, that will La be on site. Yeah, like Lon Fon, who's the expert in uh, financing construction. for construction. Um, she's I know at one of the houses for sure. She'll she'll be out and about. And and so the the, the point is you'll be able to talk to those experts about the process, what things are costing, you know, 
uh, you know, what their, what their backlog is like, because a lot of the builders are right now pretty backed up. Yep. Uh-oh. So switching gears along yeah. the same vein, okay. right? You were sh- t- sharing oh, with me yes. a CNBC story saying yep. Google is reporting that uh, the hottest, tre- some of the hottest trending searches right now regarding homes is when is the housing market going to crash? So get this, Tracy, that search has spiked 2,450% in the past month. And it, it's interesting. Along that, that, with other phrases that are similar, like yeah. why is the market so hot and how much over asking price should I offer on my home in 2021? So it's interesting. Those are the spikes on Google searches, which, uh, you know, I completely understand. Yeah. You know, it, there, one of the things that, that happens, and I know listeners to Kiva get this, is that um, news media will take something that's a very um non well no no yeah the non but it but it's a, it, it can be a, a trigger for people a very emotional you know the housing thing a lot of uh kids that are not kids now lived through the the crash of 2008 right right and so now they're millennials right now they're getting into that you know maybe buying a home or maybe you know thinking about buying a home, they lived through that. They watched their parents go through that in 2008. So, you know, I understand that the angst that is out there, but what I was saying is, is Kiva listeners understand that news media will take something and, and try to create a story where maybe there isn't a story, but obviously there's a story there because people are curious. It's like, how, how can this market be so hot? And when is it going to stop? We know it's going to stop. The question is, is it going to be just a slow coast to a stop or is it going to be a screeching halt? And, and my feeling right now is it's, it's going to continue at this pace for a while because there's no signs of uh, anything, anything changing, Tracy. And, and a, a couple things just to talk about. So there's three things that we want to keep in mind. And if you don't see these in the stories that are talking about how there's a, a home bubble building and that the market's going to crash, then they're not telling you the whole story. And th- there's one other thing, too, that I'll throw in here. But but the first one is home price appreciation. Leading up to 2007, Tracy, it was like 10% average over the four years leading up to 2007-8. Um, in the last few, few, four years now, today, it's been closer to 6%. So we haven't had quite the acceleration in home price appreciation that we did back then. Um, the other one, Tracy, you could speak to this. I know you know this really well, is, is the way lending standards have been now in the last, well, literally 10, 12 years versus the way they were back then. Right. The default risk now is so much lower than it was back in the 2000, early 2000s, right? When now now the products are very um, careful to make sure that the borrowers can afford the payment, that yep. they have stability, yep. that their credit score shows that they're credit worthy, they're good at paying their bills and being responsible. Um, so the product risk is lower and the borrower risk is lower because the products aren't available that allow people that shouldn't be getting well, those, credit. Those, those really aggressive, what we call products, meaning loan products like uh, adjustable rate mortgages, right? With the teaser rate that, that like, you know, for one year it would be 2% and then all of a sudden it, it jumps up you know, a, a couple of years later. That got a lot of people in trouble in 2007, eight. Because when it jumped up, they couldn't afford the yeah, payment Yeah, they couldn't anymore. make the payments anymore. And right. there are still adjustable rates, but why would somebody do that, Tigo, um, right. with the rates so low, right? Why not just lock in that low rate for 20 or 30 years? The, the other thing you said was borrower risk. Borrower. And borrower, that's always a tough word, is... Um, you know, again, we we know back in the day, Tracy, people were getting mortgages that probably, um, well, let's just be honest, probably they, the sh- they probably shouldn't have been getting mortgages. We know that. That's not happening today. That hasn't happened in the last 12 years. I mean, you... If if you haven't applied for a mortgage in the last ten years, um, and you and maybe you did back, you know, in oh oh three oh four oh five, it's different. You know, 
you have to really prove your income, prove your ability to repay the mortgage. Uh, the other thing that's happening is a, a lot of homes got purchased back in the day as uh, speculation. Uh, we're, we're not seeing that today. Most people that are buying homes today are buying homes to live in. Uh, yeah. The thing that's interesting is a lot of people, and, and just a side note on that, we're seeing a lot of people that own rental properties, Tracy, that maybe, you know, decided to keep it. They're not really property, you know, investors. They just happen to have a home. They didn't want to sell it. They didn't like the market when they moved and they've been renting. But we've seen a lot of those people uh, now putting those homes on the market, which is, is actually hurt our rental market a lot from, from an inventory level as well. Right. Because it's so strong. Right. They're saying, hey, I'm finally at a place where I feel like I can make some money off that rental property and sell it because it's not my passion. Yeah. So we are seeing that for sure. So the, just the, the two other things I want to point the, the third one is the, the, the number of homes for sale. Needless to say, if you've been paying attention at all, there are very few homes uh, actually on the market for sale right now. Very, very low. It's sub 700 homes on the market in the greater Albuquerque area right now. Um, almost it, it, it hit almost 600. I think it's gone up a little bit this week. I'll know on Monday if uh, when I get my, my new stats. I think we might be getting a little bit of buildup, which would be great. But just to put that in perspective, in 2007, when the market tanked, we had about 5,000 homes on the market. We have 700 today. Which is a huge indicator, Tigo, of how quickly the market could slow down or the prices could come down. They just can't when you're at that inventory level. Well, you know, it's a we supply demand, a supply demand, right? It's economics 101. Um, for a market shift for it to turn downward would take a long time. Yeah. Just because we couldn't get 4,000 houses on the market tomorrow. The fourth thing I wanted to bring up, which wasn't on my list here, but it, it came to my mind is important when we're, when we're looking at or looking at stories about the housing market, are they talking about the demographic trends? You know, what's happening with the millennial uh, group right now is a, is a big deal. That's a huge population that's moving through these age groups now that are right in their home prime or prime home buying age. Right. And so you can't you can't stop that. People want to start homes. People so, want a home and they want ownership and they want to build yeah. their wealth there. Yeah. It's it's interesting, Tigo, because again, what we're seeing with that group is they don't want the starter home. They're buying like their second home as their first home. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They're not going and buying the cheapest home in a neighborhood they can afford. They're waiting until they can afford a home that they're going to want to be in for a yep. long time. Yep. And that's part of, you know, where their where their age too, right? They kind of skipped that first home and yep. now they're buying the second home. Um, interesting. So the thing I would say to people, if you're, you know, watching the market and you kind of want to see the, the, the two things that I'm watching really closely are the number of homes on the market, the inventory level. Um, and I'm watching interest rates. You know, if interest rates get up over 4%, um, I, I, I think that will cause a little bit of a pullback in the market, even though, there, even though there's still a bunch of people that want homes. You know what it's going to affect, Tigo, is the people who were in that 200000 price range that were kind of trying to get their first home. Those homes don't exist in Albuquerque anymore. Very few. And Very a lot few. of competition for them, yep. gain, granted. but. Those people, if the interest rates go up 1%, that rise in what their monthly payment could be could price them out of the market. Yeah. Um, but 4%, 5% for most borrowers that are buying $300,000, $400,000, $500,000 houses, it's not going to matter. It's for those entry-level people where an extra $20 a month on a mortgage is going to start to push their limit, right? Yep, yep, yep. Um, you know, I just want to say one thing if anybody's listening and they're going, well, what about all the forbearance? What about the foreclosure rush that's coming? We don't have to time to get into that. My my take, my feeling on that and, and most of the experts that I'm following and listening to is there just doesn't appear to be 
there, there isn't going to be this big flood. And, and I, I did a couple videos on that already, so I won't go into that. But there, there just isn't. Um, Tracy, I'm going to change the subject, and I want to ask you about this trend that we've been seeing now for quite a few years. And it's really catching on. And the thing that's interesting what talking. What is that trend? Well, wait, hold on, hold on. I'm building it. You're I'm building this weight. You're making this weight. It's the multi generational housing. And, and we've seen builders uh, adjusting their, their products to this, meaning that it has a, you know, there's a lot of different terms for it in law suite in New Mexico, casita. it's the, the casita or it's the granny flats or, you know, whatever, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's kind of like the second home within the home. And, and the thing that's interesting, there were some interesting stats here, Tracy. Did you see this one? I did not. Yeah, it's... Uh, You're the stat man. Well, there we go. So the percentage of total homes sold in 2020 um, that were this kind of multi-generational type type home where, again, it had one of those things, uh, the, what do they call it? ADU, auxiliary dwelling unit is another term you hear sometimes too. Um, 12% of the homes sold. Well, that's a pretty big, pretty big move. And they're saying the spring of... of um, it, it hit uh, it hit even higher. So you I know what yeah. I find interesting yeah. looking at this uh -huh. visual that you pulled up that I hadn't seen before is the most common age range of these buyers for these homes that have that is forty one to fifty five. Now that's young. These are people who are <laughs> young to <moving>. us. <laughs> young to us. You. But, yeah. But uh, and the second age bracket is seventy five to ninety five years old. So. They're buying it and having a space for them and moving in one of their child children or something. But it's interesting because 41 to 55 is pretty young, right, Tigo? Yeah, that's really um, young. And they're buying these houses with a casita or an in-law suite or an extra living area that um, is available. So... The, I, did you want to hit on these ben the benefits that people are seeing from it? Was that where you no, were going? Oh. I wanted to just say, you know, uh, several years ago... Um, D.R. Horton and Pulte started adding that option into yeah. their floor plans, and they had spectac they have spectacular floor plans that have that. And you know, the in-law suite isn't just a bedroom with a bathroom, right? It's typically on a main floor if the yeah. whole house isn't main one one level. Um, but it also has some sort of um, an extra living space, so you've got a little living room in addition to a bedroom, and then a small little kitchenette. In addition to the bathroom, um, separate entrance sometimes. A separate entrance yep. sometimes. So we've seen that lately in Abrazo Homes, yep. where they're building in the new neighborhood that's in the parade of you homes. You know, you know what? Can we just sidebar here for a second because we 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 overlooked it when we were talking about the parade of homes this weekend. In that, uh, pull, um, I'm so Abrazo pulled. Abrazo Homes, which is a local uh, locally owned home builder here, they have a neighborhood right by the Balloon Park, just. What would it be? Just north west, of Alameda, north and off was, Horizon Boulevard. Yeah, south and west of the Balloon Park, if you can envision that. And um, it's behind the Big Horizon Business Building, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. But um, they have, the, you know, a lot of their models they have there do have the option of the in-law suite or the. Again, they're calling it a casita. Casita. And from what we understand, they just started opening up that neighborhood to sales. It's a gated neighborhood right there it's only like 34 home sites yeah it sounds right about next right to the balloon park um so i would suggest you go and check check out the abrazo homes but they said that most people who have committed to purchasing there have taken that casita option and put that into their floor plan it does make sense so to, just to wrap up this conversation about this this multi-generational housing trend and, and some of the benefits that people are seeing is it's it takes the budget and it helps combine it right right you know it also you know as in you take two families right coming together they can live in one home both of their incomes from both families they can typically afford a bigger home but then the, or a, a pricier home but then they can sort of take care of each other and watch things. One can exactly. go on vacation and the dogs are taken care of. And yeah, not just health related. It's just, yeah. you know, the, the yard, the upkeep, the yeah. pets. Yep. 
Yeah. And, you know, and obviously it's, you know, quality time together is, is always an important thing. Obviously, if you like your (laughs) in-laws or your children, your your friends, I suppose people could do it with your parents. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, the, the way these floor plans are built now, they, they do work really well and give plenty of space for for everybody. And then, uh, shared caregiving duties, which, which is the obvious one. So, Yeah. multi-generational housing yep not a new trend but definitely still on the rise well and it's it is it is a thing and it's uh i don't think gonna go go away anytime soon especially what? with the the millennial boom and the baby boomers you know aging too yep. let's hit on a few open houses yes so yeah. homes of the week tracy what do we have we have coneflower open saturday one to three with jill anderson 9709 Coneflower Drive Northwest. It's a very um, special property off of Paradise, in Paradise Hills, closer in Paradise Hills, but it's on an acre uh-huh. and um, views to the mountains. It's a, a little enclave of homes that are on larger lots. Uh, this house is 525000 It's really unique. The whole upper level is master suite. The other bedrooms are down. Everything up is a part of the master suite. The kitchen is just gorgeous to die for. You've just got to Google it. 9709 Coneflower Drive Northwest. Open 1 to 3. Yep. Uh, Calle Barbarita. First time open and being allowed to be seen for 484 500 uh, 1943 Car- Car- Calle Barbarita Northwest. That's in the valley. Is open Sunday from 1 to 3. And this will be its own first open house. It'll yes. be its first letting people see the house. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Um, Glenlock, Glenlocky Way, northeast, 459, 500 from Oh, that was five. open Friday. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was an evening taking advantage of the parade. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. Yep. Wagon Train in Four Hills. Yep. Wagon Train in Four, four Hills for 400,000 on Wagon With Train. With a swimming pool. Yeah. If you don't know... You know, Four Hills in that neighborhood, classic uh, Albuquerque neighborhood, um, in the extreme southeast part of the city. There's lots of other open houses this weekend. What I would suggest is give us a call, 448-8888, and we can let you know if you're looking for a certain neighborhood. We can tell you what's open there, not just the houses listed by Venturi Realty Group, but all houses. And also, um, Tigo. Uh, coming soon. So we have so many, we're so thankful, houses yeah. that are in the process of being listed for sale. They're getting ready. They'll be on the market soon. If you're looking for something special, call us. Let us uh, be the bird dog for you and start finding that right house. 